Hi everyone, my name is Laura and welcome to Book Bubbler. Today I thought I would do what sounds like a really fun tag. This is the Read Doris tag. If you don't know Doris at all the books, she is wonderful and you are missing out. So go over there and subscribe to her. <sighs> what to say about Doris? She is considerate and kind, smart, wild bred, loves her kid, loves her cats, nature. It's like vlogging and books together and she's got such a calm presence and I always try to save her videos for like the last thing I watch in the day if I'm going to be watching booktube for a while and I usually can't do it. I just end up watching it first because I just, I just adore Doris. So when I saw Sean and Britta do this tag, I thought, well, I really want to do this too. So here I am with my little contribution. Everyone's has been really, really interesting to see, by the way. I really have liked everyone. And I think it's hilarious that <laughs> for the first prompt, um, prompt, excuse me, everyone seems to be picking Doris Kearns Goodwin or Doris Lessing. Um, and I could pick the same books as well, but I, <laughs> I found another one on my shelves here. So let's get started. Okay, so the first prompt is D is for Doris, a book written by and or about a Doris. So I have this one called Century Girl by Lauren Redness. Lauren Redness also wrote um, Weather is her most recent release and she also wrote Radioactive which I featured a little while ago. So this is 100 years in the life of Doris Eaton Travis, last living star of the Ziegfeld Follies. Uh, I haven't read this yet but I, it's been calling me from the shelf so I will be doing reading it soon. Um, but I like Lauren Rennes' style of, you know, illustrations, collaging, writing over things, you know. Yeah. Super glary. Sorry about that. But anyways, D is for Doris. This should be really good. Next up, O is for Outside Your Comfort Zone. A book that you have read or want to read that was well outside of your comfort zone. So I struggled a little bit with this because I like to read a lot of different things and I have a lot on my shelves that I want to read. If something is outside my comfort zone and I don't like it, I just get rid of it. Like anything else I don't really like, I just let it go. But I did find one <laughs> and just holding this makes me uncomfortable and I don't know why. That is The Shameful Suicide of Winston Churchill by Peter Miller. I wish I remembered where I bought this from or why. It's um, a UK copy. I don't, I, it could have been from Daedalus Books. It could have been from Book Outlet, though I don't think I was buying from them at that point. Um, obviously, this is fiction set um, in 1949. And Stalin takes over England. So, Churchill decides to kill himself. So that's part of it. And then the other part is set in 1989. England is divided between Soviet and American sectors with London split into two. So it's about a police detective working with Scotland Yard and also, um, oh geez, I don't know. There's a, there's a death. So somehow this death that they find this body hanging off of Tower Bridge has to do with both police forces in 1989 London and it also reflects back on when Churchill killed himself or supposedly killed himself or whatever in 1949 when Russia took over England. This sounds interesting and I have not seen anyone ever mention this book or author before um, so you know totally new but it just makes me uncomfortable. I, I don't know why. It's not suicide you know it's not great. I don't think anyone can say they enjoy reading about suicide necessarily. It's not that. I I don't think it's shameful. Shame isn't a huge thing for me. I mean, I have lots of other stuff, but that's not one of them. Um, I think Churchill is fascinating. I think the war is fascinating. I like dual timelines and like time jumps and things. So I don't know why, but this whole book just makes me incredibly uncomfortable. So I should just try to read it and then either let it go or be surprised. Hopefully it's the latter, but I figure it will be, probably be the former. So, okay, next prompt. R is for recommended. 
a book topic or theme that Doris has featured on her channel that intrigued you? Well, everything she reads, either I already own or I want to read. So <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged sword. But the most recent haul that was inspired by Doris was a book outlet haul. And it is this one, The Great Influenza by John M. Barry. I was thinking I could read this now, like... I could handle this in the midst of a pandemic, but I really don't think that I can. I really want to read this and things like the flu, the rain influenza, and the plague and the black death, big things like that really interest me. I don't read a lot about them, but the topic interests me. I like watching stuff on TV about it and everything. So I have this here waiting for whenever I can handle it again, because right now uh, this is just too much for me to handle. So. But this was totally a Doris inspired by. Thank you, Doris. Okay, I is for Indeed. She's crazy about cats and bees. And so a book that features cats or bees or any other animal or notably features them in the story or on the cover. So the easiest thing to find that was like popped right into my head was Edward Gorey because Edward Gorey loved cats. So I'm featuring Amphigory also, or Amphigory again, Amphigory again, a collection of his work. And I thought I might have to putz around a little bit in this and see if I could find some cat stuff in there. But nope, like pretty much right away. It's just a collection of illustrations of cats numbered one through 20. But yeah, Gory loved cats. So, anything Edward Gory, Amphigory again. And the very last prompt is S is for Skyrocket, a book you think Doris might like and that you would, would like her to read. Um, let's get her Tower of Doom up into the stratosphere, and I wholly support this mission. Um, so, I chose the start of a manga series. This is A Bride Story by Kaoru Mori. She is Japanese and this series is set in the 19th century on the Silk Road. You feature, it features two families slash, I'm going to say villages. I mean, they're all nomadic tribes, but they do have some establishments. So I'm going to say villages. And um, in this first volume here, we meet this young lady on the cover. She is engaged and gets married to a young boy who is 12. She is eight years older than him, which is, of course, ancient back then. You know, she's a spinster. And it's desperation that her family marries her off to him. And um, she's starting to develop, develop feelings for him. Um, she has to leave her whole family behind to go and join his tribe and his group and live with him. It's just fascinating. Let me show you some of the artwork in here. Incredibly detailed. I mean, look at this. It's just amazing what she does. And the stuff that she writes is based on historical, based on historical facts, things that she could find out um, about the Silk Road, based on traditional nomadic life. And it's so fascinating. I just love this series. The 12th book just came out this past fall, I believe. So it's still current, still writing. I don't know how many more will be after this, but this is such a great series. I recommend it to anyone who likes anything with history, anything based on the Silk Road. I mean, anything at all, but any of this stuff. And if you really like this, you might also like the rest of Keoru's work. She has a series called Emma, which is set in Victorian England. Victorian London and Emma is the maid of the house. I think that's 10 volumes. And she also has one other volume released in English at least. It's called, I think, Everything and Nothing. So it's a collection of shorter comic strips essentially, or just drawings or whatever. But really, really recommend this series and this author. It's just fascinating. And you just fall right in with all of these people. You meet dozens of people and it's just lovely, lovely, lovely. So. That's the whole tag. Um, you're supposed to tag people, but it's been, I think, two weeks now by the time this gets up that it has been her birthday. So happy belated birthday, Doris. If you want to do this, knock yourself out. That'd be great. I think there should be more people doing this tag. It's really unusual and interesting. Thank you again to Sean of Sean the Book Maniac and Britta of Britta Bowler for creating this tag. And um, 
yeah, I hope you all check everyone's channels out. I'll link everything below. And I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy and you're reading something that is wonderful and distracting and not stressful in the least. So take care and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.